When I checked out your NR200 builds recently, I was impressed by how many builds utilize the Mugen 5, and it's a pretty good cooler, but uh, unfortunately it's a bit held back by the fan, but there's a new version out now. Let's see if this is the best Mugen yet. Welcome to Machines and More. The Scythe Mugen 5 is a cooler that manages to fit a lot of heat sink mass in a relatively low height, and part of its popularity with height constrained builds like the Cooler Master NR200 is due to that lower height and in the NR200P will even fit the glass panel without much fuss. It's not exactly compact though, in fact it's rather wide or, or thick if you look at it this way, and some of you have surmised that the heatsink is too wide for its own good, but one thing is for sure, the fact that the stock Kaze Flex fan tops out at 1200 RPM isn't doing it any favors. To some extent, the Mugen 5 Black version that came with the 1500 RPM version of the Kaze Flex did improve the overall headroom of the cooler, but uh, it's just doing so with a higher noise penalty. And the Kase Flex already doesn't have the greatest noise profile. Scythe sent by the latest version of the Mugen 5, dubbed the 5S, and presumably that S stands for snail, which is the Wonder Snail fan that was, uh, you know, that we've tested in a few reviews on this channel already. So let's just take a look at the cooler with this new fan. Uh, by the way, this video isn't sponsored and you can expect this review, like the others on this channel, to be the product of my independent research and testing. For the most part, this is the Mugen 5 revision B that you know already, 154.5 millimeters tall, same large chunky heatsink with a cutout on one side, and it is offset to allow the user some flexibility in positioning, and it does come with goodies like the Scythe magnetic screwdriver, a tube of thermal paste which should allow for a few remounts and the necessary mounting hardware. Interestingly, at least on the testing sample I received, the hardware is black, which is a bit different than the original one which has the silver hardware, and the black hardware is otherwise identical to what you would get on the Mugen 5 black version. One thing is that while the cooler is LGA 1700 compatible, if you want to run this with Alder Lake, you will have to buy the mounting kit, which will set you back about $8, so it is something else to consider if you're going that route. Scythe also includes two sets of fan clips, which is a nice touch in case you ever want to do a push-pull setup with this one. But this is the biggest change here, and instead of the 1200 RPM Max Kase Flex fan, you now get a Wonder Snail 120. One thing though is it's not quite the same Wonder Snail version as you might find on the retail market, and this one does top out at 1800 RPM, plus or minus 10%. And mine topped out at about 1700 RPM, so that's well within that variance. At 1700 RPM, though, even though it is a different fan design, it's gonna offer a little more oomph than the 1200 RPM Kaze Flex. And actually, it's not gonna come at a noise penalty either. And from my testing, the original Kaze Flex at 94%, or roughly 1170 RPM, produces a similar amount of noise compared to the Wonder Snail at 100% or 1700 RPM. So let's just take a look at how the thermal performance of the Revision B compares to the 5S. With the NR200 test system and a 5800X clocked on all cores to 4.6 gigahertz at 1.25 volts, about 110 watts of package power here, this gives us an apples to apples comparison of how the two versions compare. Here we see a fairly consistent two degree gap between the two at equivalent noise levels and that there is pretty impressive. The Kaze Flex doesn't have the best noise profile, so the Wonder Snail is actually a big improvement in this regard. So either you can run lower fan speeds and get a noise benefit, or you can just get lower temps and keep those same noise levels here. If we take a look at the Mugen 5 Black Edition, and there were some concerns over the implementation of the black coating. So in order to get to the same thermal performance as even the bare aluminum version, the Black Edition's higher RPM Kaze Flex fan, it needed to spin faster at 1350 RPM, and that results in about two and a half decibels of increased noise here. So when noise is a consideration, I think the Wonder Snail version is certainly the best performing Mugen 5 version. So as I mentioned, this fan is not the same as the retail standalone Wonder Snail and the max RPM is reduced by about 600 RPM because the retail version goes to 2400 RPM. So what are you missing out on here? Well, for one, it does get exponentially louder at the higher RPMs, but uh, there's a decent amount of headroom that you do lose from limiting that fan, about three degrees here. 
And noise aside, that could be a critical amount of headroom if your operating environment is naturally on the warm side or if you're trying to push a heavier overclock. If you're intending to operate at the higher noise level, the fan from the Kaze Flex Black at max speed, it hits the same noise level, but it still lags behind the full speed Wonder Snail. If you wanted to upgrade your performance, you could pick up a retail Wonder Snail fan, which is gonna be your best scythe choice, but realistically, if your operating requirements are consistently more demanding, then I'd be inclined to recommend an upgrade to a higher end unit altogether, like our reference grade Nocto U12A here. And you're still getting more performance here, even at a much lower noise level. Let's just take a quick listen to the fans. I have reviewed these Wonder Snails already, so I won't go through the full range, but uh, just so you have an idea on the noise of the Kaze Flex version versus this one, let's take a listen. There's really no noise penalty at 100% on the RPM limited version, right? I do wish that the regular full speed Wonder Snail was implemented here since a more savvy user could just adjust the fan curve to suit. But I do realize that from a marketing standpoint, you have to consider that your average user probably won't do that. But I'm actually curious about this particular design phenomenon. So I will research that more in depth for a future video. I am also a little disappointed that the LGA 1700 hardware isn't just included at this point, especially since this platform is gonna be more ubiquitous going forward. And the extra $8 actually is a significant addition to what is a very reasonably priced CPU cooler. So is this the best Mugen 5 version? I'd say absolutely. The Casio Flex version, it was better suited to your Ryzen 5 level of CPU. And that fan upgrade here gives it a lot more usability, headroom, and uh, you know you can move it to your next more higher powered build, no problem. It makes it more usable for your Ryzen 7 level of CPU, and it's better than the black version at a better noise level. And even if noise isn't a concern and the max headroom is what you're concerned about, at 100%, this will perform similarly to the black edition but it's gonna operate at a significantly quieter noise level. Price-wise, this is coming in at around $57 US, and that is seven bucks more than the Kaze Flex one, which actually that gap is more than the price gap between the two fans at retail, but you don't have to go buy another fan here and it's all ready to go, right? And I think that is well worth it for the higher RPM fan. It's also cheaper than the Black Edition by a few dollars. And so, yeah, in summer, if you want a quieter system and you still want performance, this is the Mugen 5 that I would go for, and I would absolutely recommend this one for a moderate TDP CPU build. And in fact, for your Ryzen 5, your i5-10400 type of CPU, this would be my go-to, especially for the NR200P. And good job by Scythe for bundling in this new fan to alleviate some of the performance concerns with the previous revision. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give a like if so. Subscribe if you haven't already. Product links are down below. Thanks for watching today.